Thank you, Walter. Well, good morning, everyone. And it was three years ago today, or almost today, that I was actually on this stage last, and I've finally been invited back. So uh, thank you, Harold Benjamin, and thank you, Keith. Now, I was um, only told last week that um, auctioneers are best described as part agents. Well, perhaps, I'd like to think so. Um, part actors, you can judge for yourself. Part solicitors, close your ears, Keith. Um, sometimes admired, well, I'd like to think so. Uh, occasionally hated, probably when we're, um, you're trying to buy from us, and often the topic of conversation. Well, of course, that's par for the course, ladies and gents. So what am I going to talk about today? <clears throat> well, to inform you, num number one, this talk will, will, will be a, 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 a talk of hard facts and auction insider intelligence. Okay, I'm going to talk about key facts and stats in the auction market. We're going to look at volumes of private purchases at auction. And just to remind you, this is commercial property auctions, not residential. We're going to look at that and compare it to volumes of purchases at private treaty over the years. We're going to look at auction room turnover statistics, sale rate performance, and auction pricing. We're going to look at today's buyers and sellers. Who are today's buyers and sellers, and what are the current trends? What's selling well in the auction room? And the what and why of recent auction sales, the thing you guys love to see, all those photos of things that have sold in the auction in the last six months or so. And then finally, we're going to look at the outlook and opportunities ahead for you guys. I'm not going to bamboozle you too much with graphs, but um, I have got three or four. So we're going to start off by looking at this graph here, which looks at the turnover at auctions versus the turnover um, at, uh, via private treaty. And this is for private investor purchases. And if you look at 2006, I'll just point out a couple of things. 2006, at the very peak of the market, commercial au property auction sales peaked at 1.6 billion pounds. Private treaty purchases, again by private investors in the same year, was 7.5 billion pounds. So in 2006, only 20% by volume sold at auction. Again, an 80% by private treaty, and that's private investor purchases. Now, roll the dice on 10 years um, to the end of last year, 2016, and auction sales represented 30% by volume, 1.1 billion under the hammer, commercial property auctions. So a significant upturn, as you can see, and the gap is closing. What about auction room activity through the cycles? What about auction room turnover? That's what we're talking about here. Over the last 30 years, as you can see. Now, activity now is only about 30% below the 2006 peak. So in 2006, 1.65 billion was transacted under the hammer in commercial property auctions. And in 2016, it was 1.1 billion. But look at the sharp recovery, which is the most important thing, since 2012. 2012, about 400 million. Now, as I say, about 1.1 billion. And a closer look at what's happened in the last few years, since 2014 or so. Well, 2015 from 2014, we were about 5% down. And this is the commercial auction market again as a whole. 5% down on turnover from 2015, in 2015 from 2014. 2016, well, what a year that was. About 22% up from 2015, 906 million to 1.1 billion. Now, 2017, obviously, we're um, halfway through the year, and we are ahead of where we were in 2015, about 13% up, but obviously, we are a little bit down from where we were this time last year. General election, Brexit, uncertainty, you've heard it all before. But what are we forecasting for the rest of this year, the rest of 2017, as the climate we hope starts to settle? Well, we expect to see a significant surge in volumes um, for the rest of this year. And I'm, I'm very much looking at the corner over there. I can see you all by the pillar. Um, some of my loyal friends in the auction room, hello over there. So we, we do hope that supply um, will increase as, the, uh, as uh, 2017 rolls on. And sale rate performance, this is the one that might give you a slight headache, but um, despite all the uncertainties, actually sale rates in the auction rooms, commercial auction rooms, have remained consistently high. And we're even surpassing where we were in 2006, where success rates were averaging about 80%. In 2008, pretty much in the doldrums, success rates averaged at around 70%. 
but in the, over the last couple of years, we're up towards 90%. Now, why is that? Well, there's been a lack of stock, um, there's been accurate, accurate auction pricing, and motivated sellers over the last couple of years, and also, of course, strong buyer confidence. And finally, the final graph today, what's happened to pricing at auction? Well, yields unsurprisingly drifted between 2007 and 2012. They kept drifting, yields softened. Since 2012, they've been on a downward trend. The prices have been firming up. Only now, in 2017, are they starting to stabilize again, averaging in the auction room, averaging at around 8%. But the difference, as you can see, between the prime end and the secondary end is wide and widening further. So who are today's sellers in the market? And these are acuitous figures. Now, the percentages quoted below are 2017 percentages. Most of our sellers now, most of our sellers now, are private property companies. But in the last couple of years, 50% of our instructions came from receivers, administrators, banks, etc. But the trend has since reversed, as buyers of those loan books and distressed lots have, are now starting to sell again through the auction room. Looking a little bit further down the table, as you can see, under receivers, administrators, liquidators, and banks in 2017, we are still seeing a number of consensual sales coming through, but generally this trend is down. Private investors, 12% of our sales come from private investors. What do we class as private investors? Those, those of you may be here today where property is not your main source of income. You're pretty much one-off sellers. Institutional sellers through the auction room. Well, we've seen a bit of an uptick in this um, over the last um, year or so. And 10% of our, of our sales, of our sellers, um, are institutional sellers. Um, they are more happy and confident to give us the larger lots. And other type sellers in the auction room, corporate sellers, maybe sale and leasebacks, or, or they have surplus properties in their portfolio, public property companies to a certain extent. But the message here is at the bottom. In 2017, private property companies, many of you here today as well, um, lead the way in terms of sellers. And what about our buyers? Well, 90% of our buyers are private property companies and private investors. You won't be surprised to hear that. A number of you are repeat buyers, I'm glad to say. And a number of you have started to filter into the commercial auction room from the residential auction houses. Um, looking further down the list there, overseas is worth a mention in terms of our buyers. We've seen money in the commercial auction rooms from South Africa, Hong Kong, Kenya, Israel, taking advantage of the weak pound and the UK's relative stability. Um, other types of buyers in the auction room, occasionally the institutions, um, owner-occupiers, tenants. Great way of selling um, properties, getting your tenant to come to the room. They see it's in the auction, and they come along if they want to buy their property. Um, local authorities as well. They've spent money in the auction rooms, buying properties in their own patch. So what's selling well? Well, I've, brought, I've um, created four different um, four different. Um, uh, snapshots here. The first one, those properties let with, secu with secure income with capital growth potential. What do I mean by that? Well, true, those properties let on true grade A covenants. Long leases, 10 years plus these days. 15 years is a real premium. Um, those assets also let with re on rebased rents. This is very, very important. We've seen a real correction rents over most sectors. Uh, and um, private investors, all buyers, like properties that are, that are let a proper market rent, today's rental value. Number two down there, correctly priced high-yielding asset management intensive properties, a totally different type of buyer, astute buyers, those with asset management expertise. They back themselves to enhance their asset purchases. Quality locations, that speaks for itself, both in macro and micro terms. It is not just a north-south divide out there. There are pockets of wealth in the north. Um, look at high streets. Um, pitches have contracted. There's no doubt about it. You can walk on a high street, you go 150 yards up the road, you might as well be in a different town. Motivated vendors. Well, that's pretty straightforward as well. Willing sellers will find willing buyers, uh, and buyers are motivated by sellers who've adjusted to today's current market conditions. And what's more difficult to sell at auction? Well, vacant properties. Those where reletting prospects are particularly difficult, empty rates, other holding costs, etc. Leaseholds, not easy, especially those with onerous payaways. And poorly managed properties, those with arrears, disputes, repair issues, etc. Now, the what and why of recent auction sales, and these are real live examples of things that um, have sold at auction, 
um, through acuitous auctions in the last six months or so. And it goes without saying that there is a real pent-up demand for London. Very few opportunities still coming um, uh, through the auction houses in London. But uh, there's two properties here, both in Kentish Town, um, very close to the tube station. Um, the first one was the Holland and Barrett that we sold at the end of last year in December. Um, very secure income, let for about 10 years, recognized tenant, lock-up shop, proper rent at the right level, and it sold for 4.7%. It's what people want. And then the following auction, actually it was, um, it was actually in February 2017, not 16, um, just along the street, um, a long lease, but a local tenant, a very manageable rent at 40 odd thousand pounds, uh, lots of underbidders from the Holland and Barrett property, and this sold for 3.8% for a lock-up shop in Kentish Town. Moving on, what about London mixed-use properties? Lewisham, the first one, and very much a secondary location. There's two shops and a dentist above, but uh, people were looking at this, looking at, those, looking, looking at the upper parts. It was let to a dentist, but long-term opportunity, perhaps to convert the uppers to residential. Stacks of interest, and it sold for 4.4%, 2.2 million in March this year. And then Ilford, um, Crosswell and all that, the town, the, the, uh, Ilford's got a story. Um, long income, entirely let to the co-op bank. They had their problems uh, until 2062. Fixed rent until 2038, so 21 years without a review. Wow. But one day, look at that building, look at all those lovely uppers. Cracking location and the quality of tenant almost immaterial. Sold for 4.7% at auction. And then looking at locations, well, these, these sorts of locations always in high demand. Rygate, the Carluccio's, the top picture. Five years unexpired to Carluccio's. A fairly soft rent, including the flat at 57 odd thousand pounds, sold for 4.1% only last month with five years income. And then Godalming, we all talk about bank investments and people not sure and banks closing. But look at Godalming, uh, again, only earlier this year. Barclays, four years unexpired. Um, rack rented about 81,000 at the right level and sold for 4.4%. Two supermarkets I'd like to point out in two decent towns actually. Um, Wimborne down in Dorset and Chard down in Somerset. Um, but look at the differential between the two. Um, the top one in Wimborne was let to co-op for another 17 years. The uh, bottom picture there is Chard down in Somerset let to Sainsbury's for another one year until the break. But the fact was that Sainsbury's were highly unlikely to move. They were the only supermarket in the town centre, and they would, uh, they would remain um, and, and remove the break in turn for a capital sum, of course. But look at the difference in pricing, 5.8% for Wimborne and 7.85%, 200 basis points um, in, um, in Chard. And both decent lot sizes at 4.8 and 3.29 million. Two retail parades. Um, the first one in Winchester, always voted one of the best places to live in the UK. Um, the second one in Stoke, um, not voted one of the best places to live in the UK. Um, and similar product, actually. If you look at Winchester, secondary position in the town, in the city centre, um, all local tenants. Um, Stoke is actually Hanley, uh, right outside the shopping centre, prime as you can get, all national tenants. Winchester sold for sub 6%, Stoke sold for over 12%. Similar unexpired terms to those tenants as well. So the local economy playing a crucial role in pricing achieved at auction. And finally, enough talking about shops, what about um, some other sectors? Um, the, the first picture is a little um, industrial estate in Harpenden in Hertfordshire, very nice. Um, again, sold earlier this year in March for 1.79 million. Um, led to three different tenants, underpinning, re under underpinning residential value, for those of you who know this, surrounded by residential, and sold for 6.3% under the hammer. And then uh, an office in Nottingham we sold earlier this year, led to the government, a new five-year lease, five-year income, sold for 7.8%. So in summary, the outlook and opportunities ahead. And there's a little bit to digest there, but the ones to really I want you to focus on are the top one in bold and the bottom one in bold. It's buyer confidence is firm and private investors, investors want to invest their money. And then the bottom one, private treaty stagnation, opportunity for auctions, auctions question mark. What's happened since the Brexit referendum in June last year? Well, interestingly, there was a report um, published by Cushman and Wakefield called the Brexit Tracker. Um, and it was published in February 2017. Um, and a couple of things just to take from that. In 2016, investment activity in the private treaty market as a whole was 41% lower 
than that in 2015. In 2016, in the commercial market, commercial auction market, 22% higher in terms of volume than 2015. Now, the same report found that private treaty transactions had typically taken about three months to go under offer before Brexit. Post-Brexit, transactions take five to six months to go, had taken five to six months to go under offer. Auction lots take three to four weeks to exchange. And finally, the same report found that post-Brexit referendum, over 40% of private treaty commercial property transactions had not completed in the nine-month period following the vote. So it's a staggering, staggering figure. Um, other bullet points there, read them for yourself. Yields have, yields have hardened, but they're likely to stabilize. Rebasing of retail rents we think is coming towards an end. Permitted development rights, um, again, pretty much absorbed redundant um, office space. The mass loan book sales, that seems to be coming to an end, but many consensual sellers um, still coming to the room. Uh, and high, high net worth investors will still pay top prices for top quality product. Well, I hope you found this talk um, interesting informative and upbeat. I'm now going to hand you over to Barry. Thank you very much.